The last time Pat Rainey was here with me in the clinic for evaluation of his herniated disc, we talked about his three options, which are the same options for everyone with a herniated disc. Weighted out, microdiscectomy surgery, or epidural injection. The decision is based on the severity of the pain and the presence of any deficits that would be functionally limiting. In Pat's case, the pain was quite severe, and even more concerning, he had weakness of his hip flexor, which would make walking difficult. Pat and I therefore agreed that his best option was microdiscectomy, and when he left here, he went to have surgery with Dr. Andelkar. Remember that discs have two parts, a tough outer part shown here in white, and then the soft inner part shown in yellow. If the disc stretches and then bulges, and then the annulus, the tough outer part, actually tears, then the soft part can push out, make pressure on the nerve root, which causes it to swell, and then makes it inflamed. An inflamed nerve root causes a radiculopathy. That's weakness, depending on the level, loss of reflex, and pain shooting down the leg. That pain down the leg is what we doctors call sciatica. That herniated disc showed up on the MRI of Pat's low back as a large disc protrusion, which was placing pressure on the nerve root as well as significantly narrowing the spinal canal itself. Microdiscectomy surgery is done in an ambulatory surgery center. As a patient, you start your day in the center, meeting your nurse, meeting your anesthesiologist, going over the surgical plan with the surgeon. In this case, for Pat, the surgeon is Dr. Andelkar. He's actually a neurosurgeon I've known for years, really an excellent guy. Once in the operating room and under successful general anesthesia, Pat was placed carefully on his stomach, the skin on his back prepared and draped using sterile technique, and then a small incision made in the base of the back right over the level of the herniated disc. During the surgery, Dr. Andelkar will place a small tube into Pat, and then the rest of the surgery will be done looking down that tube through an operating microscope. Through that tiny opening with the bright light of the microscope, Dr. Andelkar will remove the herniated part of Pat's disc. The most common complications we look for during the surgery are a tear of the dura, which is the watertight, very thin lining of the spinal canal, or damage to the nerve root. Fortunately, Pat had neither one of those. Once the surgery was over, Pat spent about an hour in the recovery room and then was able to leave the ambulatory surgery center on his own two feet to go home and recover. In those first few weeks after surgery, Pat and his surgeon were on close lookout for cough, which could be a sign of pneumonia, painful urination or fever, which could, tr could be a signal that he's experiencing a urinary tract infection, and any leakage from the wound which would be a sign that there could be a fluid leak. Thank goodness none of those things happened, and frankly, they almost never do. I'm really excited to welcome Pat back today and find out how he did. Especially this last week, seems like it's been doing- You're on the mend. Much, much, much better. When I got up out of my chair, it really hurt. Yeah. And now it don't. Yeah, yeah. So. so you're on the mend. So I wasn't walking around or anything, right. you know, I, so I was putting no weight on my back. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it got a little better. Yeah. But when I got up and walked around the house and stuff, it oh. started hurting more and I was yeah. kind of dragging. So yeah. when I got over there, I hadn't been on my knee for, for a couple of weeks. So yeah. I'm thinking, well, it probably is a little stronger because I haven't been. Yeah, just re through the rest. But if I keep doing this, it's, I'm going to be right back to where I was. Uh, immediately. You, you know, you, you're certainly not going on any. Not only f you're not going on a five mile walk, you're not going on a five minute walk without getting that thing out. Yeah, so so no, let me see the scar. So you got a little uh, guy right here from there to there. And of course, as the months go by, that'll just get smaller. Let's do the good leg first, the right leg, yes. Now the left leg. And can you squat down and get back up? On one leg? Yeah. And then come up, yeah, you're great. Yeah, I mean, now the trick is to let it heal up without more of that soft part coming out. 
Okay. So remember the disc, you got that hard outer part that tore. That allowed the soft inner part to herniate and come through. It comes through and pushes on that nerve root. In your case, a lot came through. Yeah. In the surgery, the surgeon takes out the part that's herniated out, but there's still more of that soft stuff in there. Oh, I get it. If you wanted to make it come out, you would twist like crazy oh, and bounce up oh, and down. Oh, that would come out, really? Oh yeah. Now over time, and that time is about six weeks, that annulus, the hard outer part, is gonna heal up like any other, oh. like you cut your skin, it's gonna heal up. Your, your back skin's oh, okay. already totally healed. The annulus heals a little more slowly, so probably about six to eight weeks. But once it heals up, the soft part's not gonna come squishing out again. Don't screw it up. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I, I have no, I don't do, I don't lift weights or any right. of that stuff. I walk, that's about what I do. Well, right now you can walk, but it should be very light. Oh, okay. Yeah, like walking in water would be good. Oh, Of course okay. the water's freezing cold, but if you got access to a heated pool, um, light activities without impact on the ground okay. are good. A uh, stationary bike would be good. Oh, okay. An elliptical bike would be good. You know okay. what I mean? Where you're right. you're not going to crash. You're right. not going anywhere, and, yeah, and, right. and no impact. And oh, okay. So that kind of stuff would be really great right now. But just walking isn't good, huh? Walking is okay, but uh, falling's not. No. So you know, yeah. got to walk on even yeah. and not too far. Um, I would walk circle. You know, in a in a circuit. So you're never too yeah. far from where you started. If it gets, if it goes oh, south on you, you sure. can get, get in right away. Yeah, I I live right next to like a hundred feet out my door is the canal. Oh, good. And it's all paved. Yeah. It's all paved. Oh, it is paved. It's paved on one side and it's flat dirt on the other that's yeah. packed down. I like the dirt better. It's not as hard on my yeah. knees, but anyway, but it's flat for miles. Yeah, I think you're okay. Yeah. You know, but I I but, would rather have you go up quarter mile back you yeah. know back and forth i don't want you to get three miles out and can't make it back right <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and then you have to push yourself yeah so you just want to go kind of pendulum back oh, okay. and forth until you get to that six to eight week mark oh and then you're okay okay doing, oh, okay, okay, then, okay then you okay. get the green light it's too soon yet to do all that you can do it but just yeah. light yeah easy so. Um, the ant the nonsteroidals they leave in the ibuprofen or I'm sorry the ibuprofen and the naproxen they're fine but be really careful about that stomach right yeah yeah so Prilosec is your friend if you take an Aleve or an ibuprofen or a naproxen take a Prilosec too oh, Prilosec okay. it just prevents your stomach from responding to the NSAIDs with the acid okay and that prevents the ulcer and keeps you okay. safe I don't take it like. I take it probably just, it's, this only been going on like four days now, five, once a, probably once a day. A couple times I took it twice a day. Yeah. I but mean, I, honestly, there's a very high chance you're fine. Yeah. But um, why take any chance? You know, yeah, right. Why yeah, take any chance? Yeah, if you can, chance? sure. No, they, I agree. They know for sure that if you take it around the clock, so every 12 hours in the case of Aleve or every eight hours in the case of the ibuprofen, Naproxen, I think, is eight hours too. I can't remember. But if you take it around the clock multiple times a day, it's worse. And then the longer you take it, so at a month, a lot of people are getting into some pretty severe side effects. Oh, okay. I, most people don't realize those things can kill you. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Probably the bleeding and stuff. Uh, yeah. So bleeding ulcer, Yeah. kidney failure, heart attack. We're not done. Oh. Stroke. No kidding. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're like, you wouldn't believe, I mean, I mean, some of my friends, I know people who are taking that, taking those things every day. Uh, you probably oh, do too. No. It's crazy. So I'll do without them. Do without. Yeah. Okay. Uh, take them once a day if you want, but once a day is probably pretty safe, but just do me a favor. Prilosec. Pop it with it. Prilosec. You're safe. Other than that, it seems like, especially this last week, seems like it's been doing... You're on the mend. Much, much, much better. Yeah. Because yeah. it was, I'd be, when I got up out of my chair, I'd really hurt. Yeah. And, and now I don't. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you're on the mend. 
Yeah, so I think it's I think it's good. Uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of complications you missed out on that you're never going to have, like getting a urinary tract infection or pneumonia or oh, yeah. all that stuff didn't happen. And then you come into the phase of having another disc herniation. That's from, you know, until about six to eight weeks out. Oh. And then the long term, because you had that giant disc, if things are unstable in there, it could end up requiring becoming unstable, moving too much, and causing more trouble down the road. Hopefully we won't go there. Okay. I think the main thing for you is just maintain that exercise, that core strength, no sit-ups, no impact. Uh, I mean, kind of forever. Walking is fine, but like I wouldn't want you doing a hard run. No, I don't run. I haven't done that since I had knee replacement. Yeah, those days are done anyway yeah, for days, most of us. They're gone. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I've done that. Now you're you're right where you should be, and um, once you get to that six to eight week mark, you're as good as you'll ever be. Okay. You can pretty much go back to normal. All right. Well, it's good to see you. All right. Good. Call me back if you need anything. All right. And thanks for everything. Yeah. I really yeah, appreciate it's my pleasure. it.